Welcome to Lunch with a Lawyer. Well, this isn't the second Tuesday of the, of the month. Hurricane Irma. And so before I get into the topic, I... Uh, ...as a result of the hurricane. Hold on, we lost connection. Well, we're back. Uh, we didn't have Hurricane Irma here in the room, but in any event, we did have a little glitch here. So uh, I was saying that I've received several questions as a result of Hurricane Irma coming through, and most of those questions related to trees, and that particularly in our area here in, uh, uh, in and around the Tampa Bay area, Newport Ritchie, and all of that, uh, the biggest inconvenience we had was the loss of power and down trees. And so any number of people have you know, called me, or several people have called me, and said, well, my neighbor's tree has fallen uh, on my property, and I got a mess in my backyard or a mess in my property. So, you know, is he responsible for taking out, uh, clearing out the debris, because it can be quite costly, such as a big oak tree? The answer to the question is no. Uh, he is not responsible because it was an act of God. It's nothing that uh, he, uh, he was not negligent as far as this tree standing there and then all of Hurricane Irma's winds or any storm blowing a tree over into your neighbor's yard. Now, what happens if the, uh, your, the, the neighbor's tree not only falls in your backyard, but falls on your house or other property and does damage, well, then he's still not responsible for it because he didn't blow down the tree, Hurricane Irma did, which is an act of God, so you need to call your insurance company to see if they won't take care of the damage. Unfortunately, the, your, your insurance or your homeowner's insurance policy has a hurricane deductible of, say, uh, three to five percent of, of whatever your coverage is and so unless you have extensive damages well your deductible is not you know going to wipe out whatever the cost is particularly as far as uh, uh, any damage to your property unless it was severe furthermore uh, your uh, insurance would not cover uh, the debris removal uh, on your yard unless there was damage to your property because uh, they only insure the structure and so unless the tree fell on your your uh, house that wouldn't uh, wouldn't help you uh, as far as getting the great big oak tree whatever that's leaning across your fence or or has fallen in your backyard as far as getting all the debris removed and likewise if you have a tr trees and and they have uh, gone on to your neighbor's property, well, uh, you don't have any liability. Uh, what is uh, heartening, though, is to see in this, this uh, as a result of this storm, is how people come together and try and help out each other as far as clearing debris or whatever they need to do to help out their, their fellow man as far as that's concerned, helping them with, you know, uh, getting ready as far as boarding up, as far as gas and gas cans or whatever else uh, they can do to help uh, friends and family to be prepared for the storm. And so hopefully that uh, information will answer your questions, although uh, it may not help your pocketbook when you have to pay a tree surgeon thousands of dollars to remove a great big tree that's fallen on your property. Um, hopefully you and your neighbor can get your out there and, and uh, get the debris removed. So I wanted to touch on that and if you have some questions about that, I'm certainly no insurance expert other than to sort of cover the who's responsible for trees that are falling. Uh, the topic that I was going to talk about uh, before Hurricane Irma 
uh, had us uh, postponed and that we were without power for several days was what happens when someone dies owning real estate. And so uh, I get this question quite often and many times uh, it's years after someone passes away and the title is still in, in the decedent's name. Well, in order to, uh, you're going to have to uh, go through a probate proceeding in order to uh, have the title come out of the decedent's name. Now, if he had a will, or hopefully he, he or she had a will when they passed away, it should have been filed with the clerk of the court. Uh, however, if it isn't, you'd need to locate it because if you can't find a will, it's presumed revoked. Uh, many, many times, or several, any number of times, you people don't have wills. So that's another problem. I think only about 30% of the people that should, you know, that are eligible to have uh, wills uh, or trust uh, uh, are, that's the only percentage we have. So about 70% of the people that really need wills or trust or estate planning have them. But getting back uh, on point here, is if the person died without a will or you can't find the original, then the Florida statutes have a set forth who is to inherit. And that goes if you have a spouse, uh, and depending if it's your home, well, then that's treated one way under the homestead provision, and that the spouse receives a life estate in the property with the children receiving the remainder. If there's no children involved, well, then the home passes out right to the spouse. If there is a, uh, if there is a minor child, well then the, the, uh, the, the surviving spouse would only receive a, uh, a life estate and the remainder interest would go to the surviving, uh, to, to the, the children, not just to the minor child, but to all the children. So you have to go through a probate proceeding, and, and wills do have to be probated, but it can be very specific. Uh, particularly, I would urge folks that um, if you're not in a, in a married and you've had a long-term uh, partner, uh, then it's critical that you set up a will uh, so that you can uh, provide for your long-term partner uh, as far as your uh, estate is concerned whenever you're gone. Uh, uh, from time to time there is some uh, really bad results as a result of no planning and the, partner, the partners are not married so the surviving partner really doesn't have any rights in some of the property. So it's really critical that you do the estate planning. Uh, but those are the, the, the what is needed uh, whenever you, uh, whenever someone passes away. Um, in addition to the real estate involved, uh, this sort of way, the very first uh, thing needs to be is to make arrangements, and it's always great whenever the decedent has prepaid or even set forth their burial arrangements. And so then it comes down, well, who's going to pay for that? Uh, so. We're down again. The stalls are not stopped, so you know. Everything's overheating. It's been on for so long. I think you're still alive, though. All right. Well, uh, Josh was telling me, or we were concerned that we went off the went off the air for a little bit. So I'm sorry for the downtime here, and hopefully we're back. Uh, we're still with you as far as that's concerned. And I was chatting about uh, what you need to to take care of when somebody dies. And the immediate concern is taking care of the. The, the funeral arrangements and then also providing for the payment uh, which can be done by an individual stepping up and later being reimbursed for them or through a joint account 
uh, or through even uh, assigning the benefits under a life insurance policy uh, or putting it on a credit card for someone else to take care of. So once that's done immediately, well that's the most pressing problem. The next thing that I suggest you do is to, do, to try and uh, get the paperwork of the decedent to, to try and figure out what assets he had and how they were titled and that that's critical and that a will or the, the probate statutes govern property that just held in their individual name versus uh, property that uh, has a designated beneficiary. Many accounts have a uh, or joint accounts with children or they provide for a payable on death provision and so those would not be controlled by the will or by the Florida statutes when someone passes away they're controlled by contract. Brokerage accounts also have a provision that's called a TOD which is a transfer on death provision and again the will nor the statute would control uh, who would receive that account if it is designated as a TOD. Your IRAs and, uh, and the 401ks also have designated beneficiaries. Uh, so hopefully the decedent has, has kept that up to, to, to date and has left with you the information as to who the designated beneficiary is of the IRA or the 401k and uh, so you know the beneficiary's name. So uh, a lot has to do with the organization uh, or lack thereof uh, by the decedent. So once you accumulate the paperwork, well then I uh, suggest you set up an appointment, come in and see me and we can review this to see what if anything needs to be done uh, as far as administering the assets and then we can talk about that, whether we had a will or didn't have a will, the cost involved and how long it takes. And so I would be pleased to, to work with you as far as that's concerned. So there are uh, any number of, uh, uh, once you have the paperwork and a death certificate where we can then undertake, uh, or a will and a death certificate and know what the assets are, we can proceed with uh, opening up a probate proceeding and uh, getting the assets distributed to the beneficiaries either under the will or pursuant to um, the uh, uh, Florida statutes. Okay. I have a question. Are there ways to transfer real estate while you are alive? Are there ways? To, well, uh, I, Josh told me that everybody could hear the question. Yes, there are. I assume that you want to set your real estate up so that you control it during your lifetime. However, if you still own it at your death, you want it to automatically pass to uh, someone else that you've designated. So yes, we can prepare what is called a life, an enhanced life estate deed. And there's a nickname out there called Ladybird Deed. And how that works is you execute it and you say that you reserve a life estate and uh, the right to live on the property. You can sell it, do whatever you want to, but then you designate who you wish to receive it upon your, your passing. And uh, if you still own it at that time, well then you'll automatically receive it along with the death certificate. I do not suggest that you uh, add someone to your to the deed to the name to the title to your property such as joint tenants with right of survivorship uh, for a child or whatever since you're conveying a present interest in the property which may affect the uh, your homestead exemption uh, may affect uh, your qualification for medicaid may affect the how much taxes we have to pay for um, income tax if the property is sold before you pass away. So hopefully I've answered the question is yes, we can take care of that uh, whenever we do your estate planning and uh, prepare the deed and, and I've done any number of those and, and from what I can see they've worked very well. So that's uh, called Ladybird Deed, uh, named after Ladybird Johnson by the fellow that uh, published those on a treatise. So. Do we have any more questions, Josh? So, 
Well, without uh, any further questions, well, I probably ride along a little too long or whatever as far as the, you know, what to do whenever someone passes away and, and there's a state or there's a, a probate, uh, you know, we basically need to go through a probate proceeding and what you need to do. So until the next time or the next question, well, we'll see you uh, the second Tuesday in, in uh, October and stay safe. And if you got any questions, give me a call at 727-847-2288. Thanks.